that we're drop the knife. Drop the knife. Drop it. Drop the knife. Drop, drop the knife. knife. Drop the knife. Drop the knife. The knife. Drop the knife. This was the site of Interrogation Room 104, where 19-year-old Marcus Fisher sat as he was accused of robbery and assault. But what made this interrogation so heated was not the questions nor the confession, but a knife that made its way inside. In this video, we're taking you through the interrogation of Marcus Fisher and how he snuck a knife into an interrogation. On December 13th, 2017, Marcus met with a man he did not know in northeast Minneapolis in order to purchase a gun. The man was trying to sell him a kel 9mm handgun to Fisher when he pulled out his own gun and said words to the effect of, It's mine now, shot the victim in the chest, and left the scene. The bullet grazed the man's heart and lodged into his lung, causing him to go into acute respiratory arrest in the ambulance. After some extreme measures were taken, the man survived, but he did not know who the shooter was. After the investigation ran its course, he was able to identify one of the six suspects as the shooter, and that person was Marcus Fisher. On December 18th, Marcus was brought in for interrogation, which turns out wasn't his first time. What's going on? Here. Well, we want to we want to talk to you about some things that your name came up in. Um, but before we do that, we're gonna read you some rights. Uh, and I'm assuming you had that done the day before. Yeah. Been through them. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you don't understand them, just stop me and ask me, and I'll explain them to you. All right. All right. So you have, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in court. You have the right to an attorney now or at any time during questioning, and if you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed to you without cost. Do you understand each and every one of those rights? I read them to you. Yep. Okay. I want to talk to you about um, a deal that occurred Saturday. Yeah, today. No, we did not. We did not. Sometime last week. Wednesday, Thursday, maybe. Uh, what Thursday? Last last Wednesday. Do you remember where you were last Wednesday? Where? 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 Correct. Right. What were your hours of work? Work. Oh, I don't know if that's the day I stay late, but if it wasn't, 9.45 until 5 o'clock. 5.30, 5.30. 9.45 to 5.30? Correct. And that would have been at the uh, smash? Correct. 9.45 in the morning? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Want any guns? No, I don't. When was the last time you shot one? Shot a gun. Years. Years? Yeah. How many years do you think? Probably freshman. Do you recall trying to buy any guns recently? No. Not at all? No. Can you think of any reason why people would say that you were trying to buy guns? No. I mean, I don't know what day it was, but uh, my friend was at my uh, house, and I got a call, and he got robbed and shot at And I know he's been hanging with me the past couple of days, and that took his phone, everything. Took his phone, we everything. And basically, I don't know. He's just been with me the past couple of days. I've been letting him use my phone to, you know, talk to his mom, family, you know. Okay. What's your friend's name? Rayshon. Rayshon Knight. Knight. Rayshon Knight? Yeah. He's staying with you where? I say he was staying with me. He went home. He, I don't know. I know his mom stayed over north, but I think he went to like auntie's house or something. How old is he? Same age, I think. What does he go by on Facebook? Uh, I think like some guy is on Facebook. But I think it's like Ruger Sean or something. Ruger Sean? Yeah, like a nickname. When did he go home? He just went home yesterday when I went to work. Oh, yeah? Yeah. How, when did he start staying with you? Like, he, he don't stay with me, 
he just comes over for long periods of time, if that makes sense. So like, he'll come over for like a week, we'll chill, ooh, he'll go back home. Mm -hmm. And just come over again when I get a day or something. So tell me, tell me a little bit about that robbery. Cause you said, you, you mentioned that might be why you wanted, people would say you were looking for a gun. It could be because he with me and he just got robbed. So if he was looking for a gun, it probably could, you know, cause me and like, if you think about him, they think about me. So we always together. If he looking for a gun, people probably assume that I was looking for him. But I'm a wedding pre-trial for a semi-automatic. So why would I try to purchase a gun? I finally got my job back. I work every day, five days. Doctor is like, I don't got no time to be fucking up. Mm -hmm. I'm 18 with damn near two felonies. Where's Ray Sean stay? I told not with you. I told you, his auntie. Do you know that address? No. 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 I know his mom's place somewhere up in North. That's all I know. Okay. So you just need a break from mom every once in a while? <laughs> no, I think he moved out. Man, shit. Stay with his auntie, get away from the hood. No. Fisher has no alibi for the night of the botched arms deal and is trying to pin it on his friend Ray Sean. He knows that the illegal gun is in his house, but he's trying to shift the detective's investigation toward his friend by talking about how long he stayed over, how much he was angry about getting robbed, and how he had the intent to buy the gun, which Fisher claims he just arranged. The detectives do have a piece of evidence against him which is his contact, Sarah Ellington. Do you know... Do you know a girl named Sarah? Sarah, last name? White girl? Sarah, Sarah Ellington. She goes by Sarah Rose. Any associates? Uh, I think you'd know her Sarah Rose. Uh, I, I think I went Mellow her. Mellow Park. What's that? Mellow Park. I think I went to Mellow where. Oh, you went to Mellow with her? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Were you hanging out with her last Wednesday? I was not. No? Nope. So what do you know about Sarah? Sarah. When was the last time you talked to Sarah? I think when this girl named Angie died, she was just, you know, this girl we went to school with. And she died. She had a little funeral. And I've seen her there. Yeah. I'm have something really quick. Yeah, I'm going to that for a second. Very tired. Right. Educational, maybe it's something or something like that. Yeah. To get further invested. Might. I don't know. Who's that? Sarah. Is it Sarah? Correct. Okay. Is there anything in that, uh, that phone you brought with you today that you'd be hiding? No. I would. Uh, I'm just asking. No. No? Is there a passcode to that phone? Yeah. Do you care if we look through it? My, I, could, I could open it for you. You want to open it for us? You, you might? How do you open it? Uh, how do you open it? Hang it. Oh, you have a fingerprint? You got an iPhone? But yeah, what's I want to see? Text messages? Yeah, I think that's what he's kind of concerned about, especially with Sarah. You don't have to want to look through it, you know that, right? But I'm not. I, I don't want to, but I'm, I'm trying to prove like I'm not guilty. Like, I don't know. It's, it's up to you. If you mind, if you don't mind, I'd like to look. You know, I'm going to let her go the day, so. Yeah, eventually. Yeah. But like, I don't got nothing to hide, but, like, you want to look through text messages, what? Yeah. Yeah. So you got to do a fingerprint, and then uh, what's the passcode? Uh, I just put it. Watch it. Watch it. Oh, no, I'm waiting. Just to make sure. Um, oh, nine one five one five. 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 Oh, nine one five one five
What's this conversation? What does this mean? Um, you lucky I ain't no I, you ain't no snitch, but you're not lucky in my fam in jail. I'll fuck around and see you, nigga. I don't know who that was. I seen that. I asked Ray Sean about it. He told me she just didn't box you out of nowhere. Hmm? Did I hand you your phone? Yeah. Yeah? I said that. Okay. Got it. Uh, I thought she was writing it down. No. Not but he, yeah, he got robbed for everything. Like I said, I let him use my phone while I went to work because he stayed at my house. Okay. Shit. I was scrolling down my inbox. And shit. It didn't sound like this, so I didn't pay no mind. Okay. That's nice for you to let me use your phone. So. Facebook. Call family. What does pray bitch on the boss you done mean? What do you think that means? I sound like a threat if you ask me. From her? Why would she be threatening you? That's what. It don't sound like her, though. Really? Like, do that sound like a female? Right? Depends on the female. No. There's some crazy guys out there. Hey, I don't know. No, it don't sound like him. Was he texting her? Huh? Was he texting Sarah? No, he said she just typed out of nowhere. So, she so he's been that. talking with her? I hope not. Is she a bad girl? What's she mean? Is she getting us some bad shit that she should? Oh, uh, yeah. Drugs. That's how her friend overdosed and died at the age of 15. Just drugs, all types of shit. What is she into? Anything in particular? I don't know. So you sent a yeah. message. You sent a message back in September saying, got that heat, all legit, clean, untraceable, straight off the factory. On folks, hit my line. Who? Oh. You did. You sent that. Let me see. That's not me. You know what you here? That's her. That's her? Let me see. What's that up? You see, I ain't text her back. That's her. What's up? I said, you see, I ain't text her back. That's her. That's her, huh? Yeah. Well, why is she trying to sell you a gun? Back in, back in July. Mm -hmm. Or September, I mean. She only hits me up out the random, so I wouldn't know. Have you been looking for a gun? No. Wouldn't be smart, right? I mean, you got a good job right coming now. up. Yeah, you got a good job right now. I got a good job. Shit, I've been out of county for like three, four months. Going good. I don't got no reason to look for a gun and get myself in more trouble. Makes sense. So, here's the deal, dude. So, yeah, I don't entirely buy exactly what you're telling us. Um, I do think you probably got a side of the story that you would like to tell us. Um, well, we think you met up with Sarah and some of her friends on Wednesday night, and I'm not seeing in here to, anything in here to suggest you otherwise. Um, you're, you're in quite a bit of trouble. Um, what do you think that you were at a shooting over Northeast? With who, hey? Mm -hmm. No. But I told you what I've been seeing her since the funeral. Then you told me why she'd identify you as meeting her and her friends in the alley. I and then her and her friends would identify you out of a lineup as one that shot him. I do not know. Maybe they got some type of hatred towards me. She got my Facebook. I honestly don't know. Was there a, was there a fact? I was with Kyra all night. I don't deal with guns. I told you I'm on pre-trial. Like, I'm waiting for pre-trial. Like, I'm done with all that. You know, we can find out exactly when that photo was taken. All right. I, I don't believe that you don't deal with guns. In September, she's texting you to buy guns. And clearly, we erased your messages because we looked at Sarah's messages and saw you messaging back and forth so, from from your from your messenger. No, and you just looked at it. 
I did, and the ones the ones that we saw on her phone are missing from your phone. So clearly, you you uh, erased some. You did, John. So um, my question is: Is did you did you have a reason for getting into this shooting? It's not it's not whether or not you were there or did it. It's was there a reason for it? Did they did they try and rob you? I wasn't there. They didn't do it. Dan Link was um I was with Kyra all day. Well, here, here's the deal. There's a, a lot of evidence because you were talking with her back and forth via via text messenger app. And I find it hard to believe that if you weren't doing anything, you would erase them out of your phone, even though they're already in her phone. And then we've got we've got more than one person picking you out of a six person lineup as a shooter. That uh, that just doesn't happen on its own. I'm not I'm not here to I'm not here to, to place blame on you. Yeah. But you're in a lot of trouble if that's if that's the kind of story you want to go with because there's lots of evidence that says lots of different things other than that. But you seem like a pretty decent kid to a, to an extent, other than the fact that you do like your guns. So I'm guessing that you've got to have some side of the story here. Like I told you, my man got robbed. He lost everything, he lost his phone. I ain't gonna lie, he asked me, do I know anybody that's know he's going no. Let him use my phone while I was at work and stuff. He seen she take talking about some meat. He wanted to buy one. He asked me to bring him. I said no. Got off work. Kept on asking. He was thirsty. He just got shot at that the night ago. Brian. They said they was in a restaurant. Past the red truck. It was like shit, like four or five people in there I was driving. We we went around the block, came back. They talking about hop in. My man was like, no, it seems sketchy. Like there's too many people in there, I don't know. And woo, woo, woo. So we we go like up the block. We get, I don't get out, but he gets out. He's like, fuck it, because she's like, we're going to pull off if y'all, you know, if y'all don't want it. So he gets out. He goes up to the car door. I'm sitting in the car playing music, trying to watch what's going on. And shit. All I heard was a pop. I pulled off. And shit. That's it. Ain't, ain't seen him. Nothing. He told me. He told me afterwards, like the next day or something. He told me that they tried robbing. And she blacked out. Simple. Well, that's convincing. They've got photographic evidence placing him at the scene, the messages Sarah and Fisher exchanged, and still he's sticking to his flawed story. Also, you may have noticed the officer asking him whether there's anything else on him. He meant to ask about his phone, or gun, or any weapon, but he kept one thing hidden throughout this entire interrogation, only to whip it out when things went sideways. We'll put this, uh... We'll put this down the way you told us. Of course, we're going to have to forward it to bosses and stuff and let them make decisions. So you're going to have to go to jail today. For well, how long? I can't go on a house arrest? Mm -hmm. Like, no possible way. No, we we recovered with the guns that we think we're using in this case. And, uh, We, we think your DNA is probably going to be on them. Well, that's... Well, there was two guns. There was the one that was taken. Mm -hmm. We think your DNA is going to be on that. And we recovered the gun that was used in the shooting. When is it now? 
about an hour before we picked you up. So we had to test all that stuff. So uh, I'm going to be sitting in jail for a minute. Probably. So that story you want us to put out, put out on paper? So when you see the judge and he asks if you're owning your mistakes or exactly what happened, is that the story you want us to put down? No. Okay. I don't think I have anything else to do. I get some drink. Yeah, I'll see if we can find it. Uh, all right, man. Did you go to the Yeah. Fisher just pulled a pocket knife out of the waistband of his bands and started cutting himself on the throat, wrist, and chest. He locks the door so no detective can enter to stop him, which is when dispatch is called to the interrogation room. Do you need one with Taser? Yeah. 2522. Mm. Well, we didn't know exactly what was going on. Anyone 16, is there one with a taser here? Come up here. Marcus, put the knife She didn't hear it? No. We don't. Do we have a taser? Yeah. No, it's. Marcus, I specifically asked. Come on, there's an officer with a teaser. They can respond to City Hall. Room 108. 160, I have a teaser. Marcus, don't yeah, do that! Down the call for City Hall, room 108. Marcus, put the knife down! Come on, Marcus, it's not that bad! You got a bump or anything around here? I don't know what you need to have anything like that? Marcus, stop! In case he lunges at him, we can do this. Do we have anything like that in there? Well, yeah, we, I mean, we, we can open the door on the door for that. Marcus, come on, it's not that bad! Put the knife down! Jerry's coming. Yeah, this guy's armed with a knife, so he's... Marcus, put the knife down! He's a fucking chair. Now, in case you're wondering why they're not storming into the room and taking the knife from him, it's because he has the capability of self-harm and can turn the knife on himself any second. This interrogation just turned into a negotiation where the detective has to stall Marcus until backup arrives. Plus, he has to make sure that when they do open the room, he doesn't immediately hurt himself. Marcus, put the knife down. Back away from the door and put the knife down. Marcus, put the knife down and back away from the door. Is he cutting himself? Should we get it? We believe that. That's why you gotta put the knife down. Marcus. Marcus, come on, put the knife down. Marcus, put the knife down. No, we're not. Marcus, it's not that bad. Well, Put the knife check down. His he might have one in his bag. Okay. Marcus, put the knife down. Marcus, put the knife down. We can still save you if we can get to you, but put the knife down. Marcus, we know you didn't do it. Put the knife down. Marcus, put the knife down. Marcus, put the knife down and you can tell her you love her in person. No, I can't. I'm going to jail. 
sure you can see where he's sitting in the room. Okay, I, I sure will. It's up on four. Is it? Yeah. So, yeah. So we'll see. Can you come here? Oh, you're, you're locked. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Come on, Marcus. You can do this. Just put it down, buddy. You don't want to go out like this, bud. We're not going to shoot you, man. You can make this work. You can take care of your bud. What's going on there? Does it work, Joe? He wants to room 108. Why would you want to kill yourself over something you didn't do? Yeah, I know you're going to wait. Are you waiting for me? That's just charging. That's not going to put... I, I can't believe it. Come here. Well, then just cooperate uh, with us. She just arrived. Well, you guys. This will work out better. If you, you all got gloves on and stuff, off. right? Yeah. There's a lot of blood in there. Yes, sir. Yeah. You're better than this. <clears throat> you got nothing to worry about, Marcus. Where's the name of this? He's in the back. Yeah. Well, we just go in and uh, just kind of move him. He's, he's, he's still in there. Yeah, he's still in there. What are we waiting for? Somebody coming up. There's a taser. She just got here. Yeah. Come on, Marcus. Just calm down, bud. No, Marcus. We we're trying to get your phone get back charged up. It died. No, we're not going to tase you. As we said, they have to stall him and show no signs that they're planning an ambush on the other side of the door. Now comes the ambush and the, uh, well, let's just watch. Don't do it. Look, look through the door and see if you can yeah. see okay. He's in the back, far right corner. You want that chair? That's because of the area? You got, a, you got a gun for a backup? Put the chair. Put the chair. He's in the back, right corner. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Is that where? Drop the knife! Drop the knife! Drop it! Drop the knife! Drop, Drop the, the knife! knife. Yes. To understand why the officer shot him, they first tried to use the taser on him, which failed. When he was ordered to drop the knife, he walked towards the officer with the knife in his upraised hands. Approaching an officer with a weapon, or approaching anyone with a weapon, clearly means that the person has to engage in self-defense. Oh, and he didn't die, the officers just wounded him. Two weeks later, Marcus appeared in court in an orange jumpsuit standing behind a glass partition, where this body cam footage was played aloud. His right arm was heavily bandaged, and the hearing really lasted only a few minutes as Fisher had nothing to say. Fisher pleaded guilty to shooting the man and to two counts of assaulting police. Considering that he snuck a knife into an interrogation, shot a man who was at risk of dying, and did a ton of crime, do you think his six-year sentence is justified? Let's keep this conversation going in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.